All right, guys, I'm back. I'm going to do uh, the follow-up to the previous video where we're going to do some Cinebench R23 uh, at uh, completely stock on the CPU core and with an undervolt. So it'll be stock clocks, but undervolted this time. Uh, the previous score at stock clocks and uh, no undervolt at all was, I believe, about 12,900 points, and that's also with the auto fan. Um, and so what we're going to do now is do stock clocks. Um, so it's 42x is stock clocks actually. Um, so 42x for all core, 46 single core is the stock clock on it. And then I have a negative 70 millivolt on the core and a, we'll set a negative 70 millivolt undervolt on the cache. Again, that will be at stock. This is at stock. Um, and then we're gonna leave the fans at auto. So we'll come back into Hardware Info 64, reopen that again, because again, it doesn't update and show the undervolt. Um, even after you apply it, you have to reopen the program to show that it did take effect. And you can see we've got, it actually didn't take effect there. That's very odd. Let's see if it actually applied it. No, it's not applying it. Okay, so we have to actually reset the undervolt to the core. And that's probably because it has something else written from before. Um, so once you go in, you actually change it and put it to negative 70, uh, it'll take effect now. So I'll reopen that one more time, overwrite what was written in there, scroll back down and you'll see negative 70 there now on the core and negative 70 on the cache as well. And then one way to be able to easily tell is just look at your VIDs. Uh, you could see it was going to 1.2 before, where now it's gonna be, uh, once it's placed under load, um, it should drop around somewhere in the 0.9 range, something like that. So we'll leave that open and we're gonna open up Cinebench R23. Everything else is closed out of the background um, other than kind of the default apps. I guess my Logitech I can close, but Nehemic Audio and SteelSeries are default. So I would like to leave um, those on the, um, on the on profile or the auto profile. I'm actually just gonna turn off the um, the on-screen overlay just to stop from popping up. I also don't know if it's doing any sort of um, interference with the performance in the background. So we'll disable that as well, uh, again, because that's not auto. And the only thing we're gonna have open then is just hardware info 64, which is pretty light. So we can get pretty pretty accurate close to kind of an out-of-box experience with, as far as you know the apps go, I do have a few things installed. I put Valorant, so it's got that NHE thing running in the background. Um, but stock clocks, undervolted, um, and we'll see what the uh, performance is like now. 12.9 uh, roughly was the score before. Again, we're gonna use auto fan, so we'll go ahead and start the test. Bring the Hardware Info 64 to the front. It may score a little bit higher if you close this, but we're not talking like a massive difference in, in uh, points. So right away, again, temperature shot to 95 on that single core. Everything else is in the uh, high 80s, 91 on that second core basically 90 and we're hitting 77 watts sustained. It peaked at 82 for that brief start of the test. And then now we're down around 76 watts, um, 75 watts sustained and we're holding four gigahertz on uh, all eight cores up to 4.1. So about with an undervolt at stock clocks, it seems to hold somewhere around about four uh, four gigahertz all core. So it drops from that 4.2 all core, even with an undervolt. And that's just because of thermal constraints. Now, if you were to run max fans on this with an undervolt, and I'll show that in just a second, it kind of holds 4.2 for most of the tests. And that's just because it can control the temps a little bit better. Um, but with the fans at auto, they're not very loud. They're kind of just spinning up a little. Again, it doesn't have liquid metal like some of the other brands, like the Asus laptop, the G15 I had, had liquid metal. So that had pretty good temps, but they still crept up as well and got pretty high. Um, so that that kind of, if this thing had liquid metal, I think it'd be on more equal playing ground. Uh, so I'm looking forward to like the M16 results from Asus because they're going to have liquid metal on that machine. So we scored 13,466. It held about four gigahertz for most of the tests and sustained power for the most of the tests was about 75 watts with the Underbolt. So really good, really efficient, really high scores in Cinebench R23. Uh, and that was with the fans at, um, at auto. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the fans to max. We're gonna reset Hardware Info 64. 
give it a second just to cool itself down here and kind of get caught up. And that's good enough for me. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. And we'll bring this back to the front. And we should see that it holds kind of about 4.2 for most of the tests as long as we can control the thermals. Um, so you saw that it didn't peak up to about 90s right away. It's still gonna creep up. It's still definitely gonna hit like 90, but this kind of helps it out, gives it that boost. So it's already up to 92 on that hot core with the 80s on the rest. This one's at 78. So that leads me to believe that the thermal paste application is not the greatest or I have like a heat sink that's not perfectly level in there. So I may end up tearing this thing down and putting on some better thermal paste and, and trying to get uh, some better performance out of it. Even if I can shave off five degrees uh, with some Gelid Extreme, that would be great. Uh, 95 is the hottest core. We're holding 4.2. It looks like we haven't dipped from that. And we are holding about 81 watts sustained on the core. Um, 80 watts now and we'll come back up. We're still at we're at 41 back up to 42 on some of the cores So the score is definitely gonna be higher here And we scored 13,930 points. So that is stock clocks 70 millivolt on your bolt with the max fans almost 14,000 points, uh, which is uh, really really good super super good um, and again, stock thermal paste, just your conventional thermal paste. And it was, I believe we saw, uh, was it about 80 watts, 82 watts, something like that. 82 was the peak, so it was definitely lower than that. Um, but overall, really good performance. Uh, I think that's what most people wanted to see. I'll do another video later for overclocking, though what I am kind of finding uh, with overclocking is that we are already thermally constrained here um, and punching out 14,000 points. Uh, it, for gaming, overclocking is, is definitely going to be something you may want to in, investigate if you're playing something lighter, uh, light, lighter uh, loads on the CPU, something like CSGO or Valorant or even uh, Warzone. You can definitely get away with an overclock because the CPU is not going to be hammered to 100% uh, with AVX instructions where when you're running something like this or you're doing professional work with a laptop, uh, blender or something along those lines and the CPU may be getting hammered. I don't think overclocking is going to be really realistic unless you use liquid metal or some sort of better thermal paste or like a, a laptop cooler or something along those lines. Your better bet is to leave it at stock and then just undervolt both on the core and the cache and you're going to get great performance. So that's my recommendation. Even for gaming, I'm probably just going to leave this thing for the most part at stock, running at 4.2 on all cores um, and then and let it get, you know, it already spits out super, super high FPS, the highest I've ever seen on a laptop. So um, yeah, that's my recommendation. I hope this information is useful to some of you guys out there uh, as far as the performance you're gonna get out of box and then the performance at auto fans and then auto fans with an undervolt and then max fans with an undervolt. Um, this kind of shows you guys what it's capable of. I'll catch you guys in the next video.